our police captain mihail makarovitch makarov a retired lieutenant-colonel was a widower and an excellent man he had only come to us three years previously but had won general esteem chiefly because he knew how to keep society together he was never without visitors and could not have got on without them some one or other was always dining with him he never sat down to table without guests he gave regular dinners too on all sorts of occasions sometimes most surprising ones though the fare was not recherche it was abundant the fish pies were excellent and the wine made up in quantity for what it lacked in quality the first room his guests entered was a well-fitted billiard-room with pictures of english race-horses in black frames on the walls an essential decoration as we all know for a bachelor's billiard-room there was card-playing every evening at his house if only at one table but at frequent intervals all the society of our town with the mamas and young ladies assembled at his house to dance though mihail makarovitch was a widower he did not live alone his widowed daughter lived with him with her two unmarried daughters grown-up girls who had finished their education they were of agreeable appearance and lively character and though every one knew they would have no dowry they attracted all the young men of fashion to their grandfather's house mihail makarovitch was by no means very efficient in his work though he performed his duties no worse than many others to speak plainly he was a man of rather narrow education his understanding of the limits of his administrative power could not always be relied upon it was not so much that he failed to grasp certain reforms enacted during the present reign as that he made conspicuous blunders in his interpretation of them this was not from any special lack of intelligence but from carelessness for he was always in too great a hurry to go into the subject i have the heart of a soldier rather than of a civilian he used to say of himself he had not even formed a definite idea of the fundamental principles of the reforms connected with the emancipation of the serfs and only picked it up so to speak from year to year involuntarily increasing his knowledge by practice and yet he was himself a landowner pyotr ilyitch knew for certain that he would meet some of mihail makarovitch's visitors there that evening but he didn't know which as it happened at that moment the prosecutor and varvinsky our district doctor a young man who had only just come to us from petersburg after taking a brilliant degree at the academy of medicine were playing whist at the police captains ippolit kirillevitch the prosecutor he was really the deputy prosecutor but we always called him the prosecutor was rather a peculiar man of about five-and-thirty inclined to be consumptive and married to a fat and childless woman he was vain and irritable though he had a good intellect and even a kind heart it seemed that all that was wrong with him was that he had a better opinion of himself than his ability warranted and that made him seem constantly uneasy he had moreover certain higher even artistic leanings towards psychology for instance a special study of the human heart a special knowledge of the criminal and his crime he cherished a grievance on this ground considering that he had been passed over in the service and being firmly persuaded that in higher spheres he had not been properly appreciated and had enemies in gloomy moments he even threatened to give up his post and practice as a barrister in criminal cases the unexpected karamazov case agitated him profoundly it was a case that might well be talked about all over russia but i am anticipating nikolai parfenovitch nelyudov the young investigating lawyer who had only come from petersburg two months before was sitting in the next room with the young ladies people talked about it afterwards and wondered that all the gentlemen should as though intentionally on the evening of the crime have been gathered together at the house of the executive authority yet it was perfectly simple and happened quite naturally 
Ippolit Kirillovitch's wife had had toothache for the last two days, and he was obliged to go out to escape from her groans. The doctor, from the very nature of his being, could not spend an evening except at cards. Nikolai Parfenovitch Nelyudov had been intending for three days past to drop in that evening at Mihail Makarovitch's, so to speak, casually, so as slyly to startle the eldest granddaughter, Olga Mihailovna, by showing that he knew her secret, that he knew it was her birthday, and that she was trying to conceal it on purpose, so as not to be obliged to give a dance he anticipated a great deal of merriment many playful jests about her age and her being afraid to reveal it about his knowing her secret and telling everybody and so on the charming young man was a great adept at such teasing the ladies had christened him the naughty man and he seemed to be delighted at the name he was extremely well-bred however of good family education and feelings and though leading a life of pleasure his sallies were always innocent and in good taste he was short and delicate-looking on his white slender little fingers he always wore a number of big glittering rings when he was engaged in his official duties he always became extraordinarily grave as though realizing his position and the sanctity of the obligations laid upon him he had a special gift for mystifying murderers and other criminals of the peasant class during interrogation and if he did not win their respect he certainly succeeded in arousing their wonder Pyotr Ilyitch was simply dumbfounded when he went into the police captains. He saw instantly that every one knew. They had positively thrown down their cards, all were standing up and talking. Even Nikolai Parfenovitch had left the young ladies and run in, looking strenuous and ready for action. Pyotr Ilyitch was met with the astounding news that old Fyodor Pavlovitch really had been murdered that evening in his own house murdered and robbed the news had only just reached them in the following manner martha ignatievna the wife of old grigory who had been knocked senseless near the fence was sleeping soundly in her bed and might well have slept till morning after the draught she had taken but all of a sudden she waked up no doubt roused by a fearful epileptic scream from smerdyakov who was lying in the next room unconscious that scream always preceded his fits and always terrified and upset martha ignatievna she could never get accustomed to it she jumped up and ran half away to smerdyakov's room but it was dark there and she could only hear the invalid beginning to gasp and struggle then Marfa Ignatievna herself screamed out, and was going to call her husband, but suddenly realized that when she had got up, he was not beside her in bed. She ran back to the bedstead and began groping with her hands, but the bed was really empty. Then he must have gone out. Where? She ran to the steps and timidly called him. She got no answer, of course but she caught the sound of groans far away in the garden in the darkness she listened the groans were repeated and it was evident they came from the garden good lord just as it was with lizaveta smerdyaschaya she thought distractedly she went timidly down the steps and saw that the gate into the garden was open he must be out there poor dear she thought she went up to the gate and all at once she distinctly heard grigory calling her by name marfa marfa in a weak moaning dreadful voice lord preserve us from harm marfa ignatievna murmured and ran towards the voice and that was how she found grigory but she found him not by the fence where he had been knocked down but about twenty paces off it appeared later that he had crawled away on coming to himself and probably had been a long time getting so far losing consciousness several times she noticed at once that he was covered with blood and screamed at the top of her voice grigory was muttering incoherently he has murdered his father murdered why scream silly run 
fetch some one but martha continued screaming and seeing that her master's window was open and that there was a candle alight in the window she ran there and began calling fyodor pavlovitch but peeping in at the window she saw a fearful sight her master was lying on his back motionless on the floor his light-coloured dressing-gown and white shirt were soaked with blood the candle on the table brightly lighted up the blood and the motionless dead face of fyodor pavlovitch terror-stricken marfa rushed away from the window ran out of the garden drew the bolt of the big gate and ran headlong by the back way to the neighbour marya kondrachevna both mother and daughter were asleep but they waked up at marfa's desperate and persistent screaming and knocking at the shutter marfa shrieking and screaming incoherently managed to tell them the main fact and to beg for assistance it happened that foma had come back from his wanderings and was staying the night with them they got him up immediately and all three ran to the scene of the crime on the way marya kondrachevna remembered that at about eight o'clock she heard a dreadful scream from their garden and this was no doubt grigory's scream parricide uttered when he caught hold of mitya's leg some one screamed out and then was silent marya kondrachevna explained as she ran running to the place where grigory lay the two women with the help of foma carried him to the lodge they lighted a candle and saw that smerdyakov was no better that he was writhing in convulsions his eyes fixed in a squint and that foam was flowing from his lips they moistened grigory's forehead with water mixed with vinegar and the water revived him at once he asked immediately is the master murdered then foma and both the women ran to the house and saw this time that not only the window but also the door into the garden was wide open though fyodor pavlovitch had for the last week locked himself in every night and did not allow even grigory to come in on any pretext seeing that door open they were afraid to go in to fyodor pavlovitch for fear anything should happen afterwards and when they returned to grigory the old man told them to go straight to the police captain marya kondrachevna ran there and gave the alarm to the whole party at the police captain's she arrived only five minutes before pyotr ilyitch so that his story came not as his own surmise and theory but as the direct confirmation by a witness of the theory held by all as to the identity of the criminal a theory he had in the bottom of his heart refused to believe till that moment it was resolved to act with energy the deputy police inspector of the town was commissioned to take four witnesses to enter fyodor pavlovitch's house and there to open an inquiry on the spot according to the regular forms which i will not go into here the district doctor a zealous man new to his work almost insisted on accompanying the police captain the prosecutor and the investigating lawyer i will note briefly that fyodor pavlovitch was found to be quite dead with his skull battered in but with what most likely with the same weapon with which grigory had been attacked and immediately that weapon was found grigory to whom all possible medical assistance was at once given described in a weak and breaking voice how he had been knocked down they began looking with a lantern by the fence and found the brass pestle dropped in a most conspicuous place on the garden path there were no signs of disturbance in the room where fyodor pavlovitch was lying but by the bed behind the screen they picked up from the floor a big and thick envelope with the inscription a present of three thousand roubles for my angel grushenka if she is willing to come and below had been added by fyodor pavlovitch for my little chicken there were three seals of red sealing wax on the envelope but it had been torn open and was empty the money had been removed they found also on the floor a piece of narrow pink ribbon with which the envelope had been tied up one piece of pyotr ilyitch's evidence made a great impression on the prosecutor and the investigating magistrate namely his idea that dmitri fyodorovitch would shoot himself before daybreak 
that he had resolved to do so had spoken of it to ilyitch had taken the pistols loaded them before him written a letter put it in his pocket etc when pyotr ilyitch though still unwilling to believe it threatened to tell some one so as to prevent the suicide mitya had answered grinning you'll be too late so they must make haste to Macro to find the criminal before he really did shoot himself that's clear that's clear repeated the prosecutor in great excitement that's just the way with mad fellows like that i shall kill myself to-morrow so i'll make merry till i die the story of how he had bought the wine and provisions excited the prosecutor more than ever do you remember the fellow that murdered a merchant called Olsufyev, gentlemen he stole fifteen hundred went at once to have his hair curled and then without even hiding the money carrying it almost in his hand in the same way he went off to the girls all were delayed however by the inquiry the search and the formalities etc in the house of fyodor pavlovitch it all took time and so two hours before starting they sent on ahead to Makro the officer of the rural police mavriki mavrikevitch Mirzov, who had arrived in the town the morning before to get his pay he was instructed to avoid raising the alarm when he reached Makro, but to keep constant watch over the criminal till the arrival of the proper authorities to procure also witnesses for the arrest police constables and so on mavriki mavrikevitch did as he was told preserving his incognito and giving no one but his old acquaintance trifon borisovitch the slightest hint of his secret business he had spoken to him just before mitya met the landlord in the balcony looking for him in the dark and noticed at once a change in trifon borisovitch's face and voice so neither mitya nor anyone else knew that he was being watched the box with the pistols had been carried off by trifon borisovitch and put in a suitable place only after four o'clock almost at sunrise all the officials the police captain the prosecutor the investigating lawyer drove up in two carriages each drawn by three horses the doctor remained at fyodor pavlovitch's to make a post-mortem next day on the body but he was particularly interested in the condition of the servant smerdyakov such violent and protracted epileptic fits recurring continually for twenty-four hours are rarely to be met with and are of interest to science he declared enthusiastically to his companions and as they left they laughingly congratulated him on his find the prosecutor and the investigating lawyer distinctly remembered the doctor's saying that smerdyakov could not outlive the night after these long but i think necessary explanations we will return to that moment of our tale at which we broke off